Welcome back to the Gig House Kitchen. Easter is fast approaching, so today let's make some sticky sweet hot cross buns. Let's get down to it. Okay, let's start with the ingredients. Here I have 300 mils of milk, one teaspoon of cinnamon, 75 grams of caster sugar, 50 grams of butter, one sachet of active dry yeast, 500 grams of strong bread flour, one teaspoon of salt, one large egg, 125 grams of mixed sultanas and citrus peel, and 75 grams of plain flour. I also used another egg for the egg wash and one tablespoon of caster sugar for the glaze, but these are optional. So to begin, I pour the milk into a saucepan and warm on a medium low heat until it comes to a bare simmer. You don't want to boil the milk because it changes the flavour, so just heat until there is a small amount of steam like this. I turned off the heat and then I added the sugar, cinnamon and butter and stirred them into the milk. I then left this to cool for around 20 minutes. While that's cooling down, let's look at the dry ingredients. First, I poured the strong bread flour and salt into a mixing bowl and I stirred them together. Once the milk was warm to the touch, but not hot, I poured my active dry yeast into the milk so that it could bloom. I do this to check that the yeast is viable. Sometimes when yeast is a little bit on the older side, it will lose its effectiveness. So by blooming the yeast like this, you can see if it's still active. Look how frothy it got. Next, I pour the milk into my mixing bowl along with the egg, which I have whisked using a fork to make it easier to combine. Then, using a round bladed knife, I mix the dough until it is fully combined before turning it out onto a well floured work surface to be kneaded. I knead the dough for around five minutes, making sure I keep my hands and work surface well floured to prevent sticking. If you happen to own a stand mixer, you can do both the mix and first kneading stage using a dough hook attachment. To knead, you want to pull and stretch the dough, then fold it back on itself. This is done to stretch the gluten and help spread the yeast evenly. The dough may be sticky and hard to handle at first, but keep kneading and it will eventually become something smooth and pliable. Once the dough is kneaded, I return it to the mixing bowl, which I have cleaned and lightly oiled to prevent the dough from sticking. I cover it with cling film and allow the dough to rise for one hour or until it has doubled in size. Store in a warm place if possible. This dough will need three rises in total, making this recipe slightly long-winded, but it is very easy. It's perfect for a lazy day at home with the family. Once our dough has risen, pour it out onto a floured work surface and add the mixed dry fruit. Mine is a mix of sultanas and citrus peel, but you could use any dry fruit if you wanted to mix up the flavours. I kneaded this for another five minutes until the fruit was well incorporated, before returning it to the bowl and covering with cling film for a second rise. You want to try to leave the cling film close to the surface of the dough to prevent a crust from forming. Let it rise for another one hour or until the dough has doubled in size. During this time, I cleaned off my work surface as this will make the dough easier to handle while we shape it. Dough shouldn't be sticky at this stage, so there's no need to flour. Once the dough is risen, I pour it onto my clean work surface and I roll it into a big fat sausage, making sure it's even so it's easier to portion accurately. Using a sharp knife, I scored the dough into 12 equal pieces and then began shaping them into buns using my mum's rolling technique. Now when you roll, it's very easy to do, you basically push down into the work surface and then relax your hand and you get a nice little round. Push down into the work surface and then relax your hand. Now it's quite important that you don't have any flour down when you do it, otherwise it will slip and you won't be able to get your nice round shape. If you want to see the full video to learn from the expert, I'll link it in the top corner. You want to try to make each dough ball roughly the same size as the others. I don't know why, but I literally couldn't stop slapping this dough. It was so fun and bouncy. Off camera, I greased a large baking tray and I lined it with baking parchment to help prevent the buns from sticking. Next, I lined the buns up approximately two centimeters apart so they would have room to expand, but we want the buns to touch after their last rise. When you're happy with how they look, loosely cover the buns with cling film and let them rise one last time for approximately one hour or until they've doubled in size. Once they've puffed up, I used a knife to score the tops, as this would make the next step much easier. As you can see, my knife was a bit blunt, but you get the idea. I also began preheating my oven to 200 degrees C, which is approximately 392 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 6. Here I also added an egg wash, which helps with the browning, but it's not essential. I mixed an egg with a few spoonfuls of water and brushed it on using a silicon brush. Next we're going to give the buns their little crosses. To achieve this, I mixed the plain flour in a bowl with a few spoonfuls of water until it made a thick but pourable slurry. For ease of use, I put the flour mixture into a piping bag, but you could also use a teaspoon or a sandwich bag if you don't have a piping bag available. I then piped crosses over the surface of the buns in this hatch pattern, which I think is the traditional way, but you could just do them individually as well. 
When this is done, I baked the buns in the oven for 15 minutes. However, my oven is quite ferocious, so I think I could have done with a minute less on these because mine got a bit too brown. You want to keep an eye on them after around the 10 minute mark and pull them out if they're getting too brown. Finally, I gave the buns a sugar glaze. I did this by mixing equal parts sugar and water, around one tablespoon of each should be fine, and warming them on the hob for a few minutes to create a syrup. Don't let it reduce or caramelize. Then, using my clean silicone pastry brush, I glazed the still warm buns with the sugar syrup. Then I left them to cool on a wire rack. Okay, our buns are now done. So let's see how they look. There you have it, 12 lovely, sticky and comforting hot crust buns ready for the Easter weekend. These were great fun to make, so you should definitely try them yourself. Thank you for joining us. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time on the Gig House Kitchen. Bye.